welcome back to the Maximum Chillage Podcast. It's me, your host, Chewy Sanchez. All with me as always. Tiki Mike. Tiki Mike. How are you doing, dude? Uh, you know, I'm doing all right, you know. Uh I don't even know how to answer that these days. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's this a, is a tum- tough one to answer tumultuous, these days. Uh, it's a it's tumultuous, they're trying times. Uh, they're trying times all the way around. I yeah. mean, it's hard to answer. I mean, there's drama in our lives there's drama in the news there's drama everywhere what do you do you know, to get away from drama honestly like when there's a lot of drama everywhere what is it that you do how do you decompress hey you know what it's really odd i'll have to send you some of these videos over instagram i are you being real right now because i being, like it i'm being very real i need some of these things look i i um i fucking hate most um meme pages not mo- most meme pages dude i love memes no you know i mean, I, I need to take that back okay I love a lot of meme pages. Um, I hate the the culture of meme pages sometimes, and some of them sometimes that are popping up hard. that are trying way yeah, too yeah, hard, yeah. and they're not even funny. It's almost like their new comedy is like so beyond other people. Like they think regu- you know, actual funny things are like trash comedy because it's so basic, and they gotta one up people with the hashtag edgy meme and it's just like nonsensical bullshit. You don't like edgy things, um, bro. But <laughs> you know what? Some of these edgy meme pages, the ones that I hate the most every once in a while they have, I don't, I don't think they originate from their pages, but they um, use these memes that I love so much. And I will start, I've started using the save feature on Instagram um, to save into almost like a little playlist. And I have, <laughs> Some of these are beautiful, man. One was like somebody attached like a GoPro to a hawk, and it's just this music <laughs> with a hawk flying through <laughs> these caverns with other hawks, and you could see the hawk's face. It's just like perspective of the hawks. There's also this really cool, <laughs> dude. I know it sounds ridiculous. There's this one cool um, video that I that I saved where it just sounds like I don't know, like some. Uh, really chill Motown kind of sounding song come on the playlist as these people are on a fucking inner tube going on this trippy ass water slide. It's, it's a beautiful scene. How long are these videos? Uh, they last like, well, however long Instagram videos last like a minute and And that's enough for you to decompress for you. to Oh man, I might watch it on loop. (laughs) (laughs) I might watch it on loop and just like, do you have headphones on when you're doing this? No, I don't. Um, that's next level shit. Maybe I should. (laughs) Maybe on a real bad day, I should do that. Um, I think that, uh, oh, one that I came across recently is actually cut from a YouTube video of um, so a Mac DeMarco song. I think it's um, done by somebody else. So, I hate or, that guy. I know you do, but I'll send you this. If it's you guys li- don't know who Mac DeMarco is, let me just tell them. He sticks microphones up his ass while he performs. Hold on a second. Can I say that I don't like his his aesthetic that he presents the hipster aesthetic but it's not necessarily even hipster it's like beyond it's, it's like it, homeless I mean, like yeah i don't know what it is um but you know some of his music is actually good um uh, but this isn't <sighs> even mac like demarco it. it's his song but it's not him that's mm. performing it and it's layered over a bunch of cut scenes from that episode in the simpsons where he like really likes this girl not his babysitter but the other one that he skates with um, oh yeah Bart she was trying to edgy herself yeah she yeah, was yeah, edgy yeah. herself and she had and to leave at the end of the episode yeah okay so this um this Shout is out a, to just the simpsons this is just a really cool minute i mean like okay the instagram video is maybe 20 30 seconds less than the actual video that's on youtube i'll send you that later i just found that today shit like that for some reason it's just like wow that's that's fucking great <laughs> <laughs> i'm decompressed a little bit um, also, you know, having a couple beers helps <laughs> a too. couple cold you know, ones with the boys. You know, I, I know, I know that's probably a bad. You like know, you drink it by yourself. Say, oh, have I drank by myself? No, or? is that what you do like regularly? Regularly? Not regularly. Um, but sometimes, uh, you know, I I don't think it's a big deal. To you know, have. I never started drinking as much as I do until we hang out. Like we, when we hang out, that's the only time like I really like hey, heavily drink. I, I I'll drink say, every now and then. I'm it's like say, a mutual thing and we're like really hurting each other. <laughs> you know it's what? like a Sometimes poison toxic relationship. I'm planning to get a fucking soda and you <laughs> ordered beers for the rounds for the table. So, you know, um, sometimes. I feel like it's expected. Is, you know, I don't know if it's always expected. I, uh, I think my gut would appreciate it if I stopped doing that. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, man. Um, but definitely, so, it's definitely nice to crack open a cold one so, with the boys sometimes. You got to decompress. Yeah. Like, I don't understand straight edge people because it's like, you got to like decompress and you got to have a beer sometimes. You know, maybe they have other things like, you know, I, I noticed a, a couple Fidget straight spinners. edge people on online just uh, got into weightlifting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, that maybe that's the more um, productive use of, of decompressing. Um, Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Somewhat healthy, unless they're doing oh, it's the healthy for your health. It's healthy where they're fucking up their back. No, it's healthy for your health. Of course it is. But I mean, being a weirdo, going to the gym every day, and just being a <laughs> recluse, just looking at yourself in the mirror, grunting. There's something about that that just turns me off. Maybe that's why I am the way I am. <laughs> I'd rather just crack open a a uh, yeah, cr- cracking up in a I crack cold open line. a uh, fall horn in pumpkin ale. By uh, Anderson Valley Brewing Company, because that's the beer of the day today. Speaking of uh, decompressing, it's Monday. The I, I actually kind of like Mondays. I was gonna say the worst part of the week. Oh, I think mm-hmm. Tuesdays are the worst part of the week because it's like you're too far from Friday from either weekend. <laughs> yeah, your uh, Wednesday's okay because hump day, and they mm-hmm. they put it in your head that it's a pretty good day to chill. That that right after that you're it's done. Thursday, yeah. yeah. So I think Tuesday's like the new Monday, but Monday. I like it. We're starting off our week uh, pretty cool with this podcast. There's some pretty crazy shit happening in the news uh, this past week, and it happened Friday when we were doing our podcast, and uh, we didn't understand the severity of it at the time. But uh, Charlestown, right? It's Charleston? Um, uh, Isn't it Charlottesville? Is it Charlottesville? I think it's Charlottesville. Yeah, because I I confuse it with Charlotte, North Carolina, but it's not. Yeah, and there's so, there's a Charleston also. Uh, there are a lot of British ass names. A lot of British ass names in the East Coast. The East Coast yeah, um, a lot of them are you know. Le- I am losing the phrase that I'm trying to say, but they 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 are almost the same fucking name. So basically, if you could um, please just explain to us what happened in Virginia this weekend that uh, the uh, the events that transpired. And uh, the severity of it. Uh, well, uh, people like David Duke and Richard Spencer. Um, David Duke was a former Imperial Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Um, Richard Spencer is a new person. He's pretty much an internet troll. He popularized the Pepe Le Frog, well, misappropriated the Pepe Le Frog thing as a white nationalist um, uh, figure or symbol, um, which honestly right there that just shows you how much of a troll he is um, to take something so ridiculous and use it as a symbol of uh, superiority or hate um, so these people created a lot of hype around this um, taking down of uh, protesting taking down uh, confederate symbols and confederate statues um, the city recently had decided that they were going to take down uh, Robert E. Lee statue um, and uh, local people some would say that well it's part of history but, you know, also, should we be proud of some parts of our history? Um, I could understand why he should be taken down. Um, well, again, maybe the person wasn't that bad, but the symbol behind the fight is there, and that's what is bad. And so I understand why they would need to take down the statue. Well, the Unite the Right, which is um, largely based from the alt-right and the Ku Klux Klan and various white supremacist groups, um, decided to have a demonstration where they bought a bunch of tiki torches, which is just emulating the symbol of the Ku Klux Klan um, when they used to use torches, um, walk through the use sta- torches, town, walk through the town to intimidate, um, intimidate or lynch people. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, very infuriating to a large portion of of uh, Americans these days. So um, again, there were counter protesters. It, led into the next day and uh so the next day after there were many disputes uh, the police dispersed the crowds um the anti-protesters in favor of um removing the statue and other confederate symbols were marching through the streets and a man from ohio uh ran his car straight through the crowd killing a 35 year old woman and injuring 19 others it's um it's a horrifying experience. If you look at the videos, it's it's uh, crazy because you see these same alt-right people uh, condemning um, religiously motivated 
uh, Islamic terrorists overseas using vehicles to um, plow down citizens, uh, people who are not engaged in military. Not, I mean, it's, it's an act of terror, basically. It's an act of domestic terrorism. Um, so I could see why, um, why, it, I mean, th- this guy's actions is definitely supposed to be labeled as a domestic terrorism. And there have been calls to, to in fact, charge him as such. Yeah, and um, it's just mind-boggling that stuff like this still happens this day and age. Like, the, it's 2017. And um, people are still out spe- just spewing hate, really. And I mean, this tweet that I saw this weekend really summed it up. The crowd that likes to yell, you lost, get over it, is uh, carrying around flags of things that have lost, like the Nazis lost. Nation. Yeah. The, the two defeated nations. Yeah. The, Both the Confederate the South States and has lost. The Nazis. And they still fly those flags. And I think it's really... Do you think that they're really Nazis? Do you think that they really believe in those ideals? Or well, how much of it is trolling? How much of it is just like... Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. If you look at some of those people, I mean, a, lo- a good portion of those guys dress specifically as Donald Trump with a Make America Great Again hat, a white polo shirt, and khakis. Um, I don't know if that could come from a genuine place of political belief or just a genuine place of hate and trolling i i don't know how much of uh of their upbringing brings them into reality of of how complicated politics can actually be or if they're just fucking trolls man i i don't know i don't understand how some of them can be so cool with the fact that they're flying nazi flag and say no not all of them were cool with that there had to be a little part of them saying oh shit like what are we like, getting oh, ourselves into probably shouldn't have shown up to this why one. am i here but you know what fucking go with it I, I bought my tt toys from target for 30 percent off i might as well use it and um i think another cool tweet that i saw was the irony of them using a polynesian symbol as a white <laughs> yeah. supremacist tool you know, like it, what did they how did they come you know, up with the idea it, to use these well you know those tiki torches they never that they off, sell dude. they don't they last a long time and not to make light of the situation they, <laughs> but yeah they probably the sentinella probably did keep away a lot of the mosquitoes of the south that, that they are really prevalent i mean they really are but um <laughs> you fucker, <dude. laughs> yeah, i mean it is the maximum children's podcast gotta throw in one joke because it's getting too and too serious but honestly it is a serious subject it's pretty like it's shitty that it's happening and I, it doesn't make me comfortable that it's happening because the uh, california even though it's very far from there bakersfield is a hub for nazis white supremacy so is Oakhurst and mariposa for ku klux klan for klu klux klan um, uh, i believe sander where we are from used to be a pretty big klu klux klan area um there was i don't know how big it was but in piedra there i believe was a chapter there's still um, a, a one guy when, in piedra who yeah is a big uh t t or nazi I, you know um he's well, a white supremacist in general he is a fucking troll too um he uh, likes to have a swastika put onto his uh, animals. Burn, animals, burned into his cattle and uh, plastered on his truck. Saw him at Walmart the other day. Um, oh, dude, I've seen him at Walmart, too. I think, well, yeah, I think you sent me a picture of him one time. Um, yeah, uh, that that guy, uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, I know he, he genuinely does hate uh, people of color. Um, I don't know how strong his political affiliation is with uh, nationalized socialism of Nazis would actually be. So again, I don't know how Nazi they really are. I just know that they are taking parts of Nazism and fascism and uh, kind of branding their own version of it in, you know, in today. What I thought was really weird is in looking at the, the protests, you see a lot of uh, gentlemen out there, older gentlemen, with uh, their caps that say that they were in a certain branch of the military. If you were in a certain branch of the U.S. military and you are standing up for a Nazi fascism. symbol, fascism, like, what are you doing? Like, or do you not see the wrong in that? I, it just it boggles my mind. It was, it, it, this all just is just incredibly weird to me that it's still happening and that it happened and lives were lost and that the president refused to name 
white supremacists as the the culprits of this. Well, well he did. He did today. Days. He, Three he, days later, he did. I mean, he had a whole press conference for MS-13 about how he wanted to get rid of MS-13. Had a whole big old thing about it. But when white supremacists actually invade one of our states and kill one of our people, this domestic terrorism, he, he takes three days to, to say something? That's... Well, part of it, honestly, is that uh, that's a big part of his uh, voter base. Definitely. Um, he doesn't want to lose. But, I mean, I think this is bigger than his presidency. His first election. So, um, without a lot of accomplishments, since a lot of his... Uh, nothing. He's his, accomplished nothing. Since a lot of his um, his uh, executive orders have not gone through, um, it's kind of like Bush back in the day. He he didn't have anything writing on you know in his first hundred days. Uh, I think people were been, saying that he was doing nothing. If nine eleven hadn't happened, that was his legacy because he was a um, lame duck president before he, that. He he would not have had another election. And and in a way like this, uh, he this that war first still rages on today still needs something behind his back whether it's white supremacists or um or the potential or just the pending nuclear lost. war that might happen uh, you, yeah. yeah there's a lot of that. things looming so, over our heads these days uh, there's the white supremacists uh almost starting a, a race war like i feel like a race war is could happen a civil war perhaps not no. maybe that big but i mean what definitely, is a war? Like what? What? Definitely, there would be one life has been lost already. Definitely, I feel like um, the way the country has gone in the past twenty some years, um, I, I almost feel like uh, I, I don't. You know, I don't know if there were other events before Columbine, but I think Columbine changed a lot of things. I think, or maybe there was Timothy a lot of domestic McVeigh. terrorism when we were kids. Timothy, Timothy McVeigh. McVeigh. Yeah, um, McVeigh. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Unabomber. Well, the Unabomber that that was before us. That wasn't that, it like right before us though. Like I mean, 88? it was over. It was over a large period of years. Yeah, like he he did it. I I want to say it was like a fifteen year span. I may be totally wrong on that. It was a long time. But he took a um, six year break after he killed his first uh, uh, victim. First victim. Yeah. Well, he just hated computers. That was his thing. Like he hated the way that I think technology was, was going. Well, I think he was also anti federal. Mm. Um, same thing with Timothy McVeigh. Yeah. Um. A very anti-federal government um so waco there was waco too the waco, the waco tragedy waco, yes that that yeah well a lot of these events uh have taken place i well i'm not gonna say necessarily waco let's let's say um back with like timothy mcveigh or columbine which is not politically motivated but i think it set a precedent of uh you know who i blame people feeling the need to um create mass panic in Marilyn one situ- situation. <laughs> hey man, like you, didn't see, to... you didn't see that line in Bowling for Columbine where he's like, whoa, 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 what would you say to them? What would you say Maybe to the it. Columbine kids? And he said, I would say nothing. That's a great... I would just listen. And I was like, fuck. That's a great Marilyn Manson Easy. impression. <laughs> <laughs> I think you found your niche. I, yeah. <laughs> Finally, 27 uh, years later, you, you found know, what you're good at. You know, um, you know, how many times did I uh, sing along to the dope show, you know, <laughs> in my gender uh, gender neutral suit, body suit? I don't know. Did I make a gender neutral body suit when I was a fucking fourth grader? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we had paper mache in high school. Um, you know, uh, things are interesting back then. Uh, yeah, well, good yeah. times. Um, again... Right now I'm wearing these headphones. They keep on slipping off because I... Well, you're not wearing them right. I know. You just don't like wearing them right? No. This well, is the first time Michael wears well, headphones. He doesn't really like them. Well, no. Yeah, don't they make I, us I sound more official? Like, we sound like we're just, like, doing it. We've been doing it for years. We're professional at our craft. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's the mic that does it for me. Um, you like the mic? Just the mic in front of you? Yeah, just the, the mic. professional because... mic with the, like, cool little boom arm. Well, yeah, you know, because if I was just talking like this without the mic, you know, I I, I have no platform. <laughs> this mic is my platform right now, and that that's that's what makes me impressed with myself. Um, is this better than the last podcast you were on? The la- the, oh, the, uh, the shout, out to, uh, shout out to Gino, Gino Diamond, Diamond uh, against the wall. It was beautiful. What did you guys talk about on that podcast? Oh, dude, we talked like about what? everything. Everything. We talked about life. Oof. And, Oof. and 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 <laughs> we talked about uh, no, I don't know what we talked about. 
uh, <laughs> I know that we had one really we had um, music breaks. I, no, we did have music breaks, but we had one very iCarly inspired segment where uh, you guys she, dance crazy. No, well, random dancing. <laughs> well, in a way, um, okay, so. Gino was uh, going to City College at the time, and he was taking a poetry class. I had, him, <laughs> I had, I had bought him some Taco Bell. I had him <laughs> recite one of his poems while eating a burrito, and to consume the entire burrito in the span of his uh, poem. So part of it was muffled. It was a ridiculous ass fucking segment to do, but um, it was back from one of our little breaks that we had. Of uh, music breaks, and uh, he introduced a poem and with a full ass mouth and just chewing. And I, I thought it was fucking avant garde, dude. That was next <laughs> level shit. <laughs> you know, um, just, I Carly just really inspired me back then. Do you remember when uh, his name was Gibby? Gibby, or, dude. Yeah, he, he would do the put ridiculous the mustard shit. in his mouth. That's that's like, Gibby was my inspiration, I think, for it. Was, my favorite one is he put a bunch of mustard in his mouth, was brushing his teeth, and <laughs> said, fiduciary <laughs> <laughs> uh, that show that was, was ahead of avant-garde time. honestly that i would be lying right now if i said that i probably wasn't a big <laughs> inspiration to me trying to do digital media <laughs> if, if two kids were living in a pretty cool penthouse in seattle washington with their brother who dropped out of law school <laughs> why couldn't i exactly dude. i mean that's the dream man they they live the dream they live the dream god damn it Miranda Cosgrove actually had really good music. I feel like she's just she was slept on because she didn't develop enough as like a uh, full well, main character or a, well, a star. You know what? I'm gonna say from. <laughs> it sounds weird that I've read a lot <laughs> on Miranda Cosgrove. Oh, I have. But she she wanted to live a normal life and go to college and good not act. So, um, or at least take a break from acting. So she kind of stepped out herself there was a lot of time there was that. a time and a place where michael and i watched a lot of nickelodeon nickelodeon a I lot was, of it we were in our we were over 18 i was not going to school i uh was working maybe 14 hours a week i was home a lot making lots of uh just full on mac and cheese full on pots of mac and cheese and spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> mac and cheese and spaghetti and you know why those were on the days that i was just i don't want to get dressed and go get a pizza <laughs> i will stay in this house it is air conditioned or heater in the winter and i i will i will not waste an outfit that i will need to wash later and i will just fucking just fucking rot in this house if i have to <laughs> I think and the, i the, i just watched uh, a lot of iCarly. a lot of iCarly. victoria justice uh, uh victorious victorious and, and spongebob um, spongebob which i found in my later life because when it came out in 99 i was like I not a fun fan or was not watching i it. didn't like it i didn't like it i didn't like Loved how popular it, it was life. when i was 20 years old it was the best thing i had ever found can we talk about the greatest tragedy that is victorious and victoria justice um dude i still think what, Victoria Justice, or were we talking about... The uh, fact that Cat that Cat Valentine, a.k.a. Ariana Grande, a uh, supporting, supporting, supporting character in that show, became the millionaire that is Ariana Grande today, and Victoria Justice, the star of the show, has a struggling career. Oh, man. Still presenting at the Nickelodeon's Teen Choice oh, Awards. Does she? Yeah, dude. Oh, that's a little embarrassing. I... I sh- you're telling me she had to tell. I think it was the other day. I'm not sure what award show it was. It was a Kitty Award show. I think it was just yesterday. She had to announce that Miley Cyrus was too busy to come and accept an award that she accepted on her behalf. Oh wow! Because Miley Cyrus is not making millions, and Victoria Justice is probably in the hundred thousands oh, right man. now. That's sad. Dude. And Ariana Grande is out changing the world with doing the Manchester uh, <laughs> stand up to terrorism uh, big concert that she was doing because the because. Ter- terrorists attacked her concert but uh that just i how much how much how much would that suck dude like that would suck if you became the star of this i'm not that <laughs> not that i'm the star of this because this isn't the fucking nobody listens to this but say we got big and uh michael steinhauer just gets his own show on e doing pop culture news <laughs> <laughs> and chewy sanchez is out there Hey, you know what? I, I have a discriminating thing against myself on this. I don't think anybody would give give me a job 
based on my chuckle that comes out every now and then it, it it's off putting in uh media for yeah. me to uh to laugh at my own jokes and sometimes <laughs> it, it happens um the star that i think is the most underrated star that should have had a career was the puppet oh yeah the ventriloquist well, not only the was, puppet but the was, guy who uh robbie yeah pop Ro- it was <laughs> Robarazzi when he had his own tmz <laughs> <laughs> that was a good episode god damn if you guys haven't watched victorious you just need to get out there and you watch victorious you know what's that i i i looked it up on amazon to see if i could buy the dvds they have seasons one and two they do not have seasons three and four they haven't even made them they have not they're That's just not in production terrible yeah it's a good show yeah it was a good show it was it was saying. a little bit like sometimes it was and too adult i think oh yeah there was no. a lot of sexual tension happening on that screen for yeah, little kids the, well again they weren't little kids i mean they were adult actors playing high schoolers the, but the, it's, was the show was kids. geared for except it wasn't because i remember when they were gearing up for their big um their big musical episode in the prison I'm thinking of the same thing it was advertised on comedy central oh no i'm not thinking of the same thing oh are you doing the circle thing that you can punch me uh he's doing well, the circle on his leg you know <laughs> he got me it's just popular today that wouldn't um, be the first punch thrown in this room today we won't explain that okay. but um the the most like crazy episode that i thought was like wow this is like for adults cat ariana grande comes in and says so-and-so can't fit their boobs in the hamburger because they oh, were oh i know they were getting, you're talking about they were in yeah. like vegetable suits to do like musicals yeah, for kids they were well, and I, and uh, uh Victoria they, Justice's veg, sister not veggie buddies. Yeah, or, like veggie something. Something like that, yeah. Um not for kids. No, no, that no, I definitely, definitely got a little aroused when she said that. Uh, <laughs> there were definitely adult themes and well, all of that dude's shows. Um was it Schneider? Oh yeah, Dan Rob Schneider? not Rob Schneider. <laughs> Dan fuck Schneider, him, dude. wasn't it? Well, Rob Schneider? Yeah. Well, yeah, fuck him. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, fuck he, he, him. If you want to look up look, what look Rob Schneider is doing these days, because it's not acting. <laughs> if you want to see what Rob Schneider is in the news for these days, you'll understand. Fuck Rob Schneider. He's, he's, he's just a piece of shit. Talking out of his ass again. Um, but uh, you know what? And that's really weird. I'm, again, I don't want to talk exactly about Rob Schneider, but half of that cast is the same. <laughs> Um, Dan Schneider. No, oh. I'm talking about Rob Schneider still. Oh shit. <laughs> um, uh, Adam Adam Sandler's pretty much like him. Um, there, there's all, all those dudes that star in the same movies together. Dude, I I, I are kind of pieces of shit. Sometimes. They are all pieces. I've uh, liked exclude some David of their, Spade. I like some of like their him. older movies and stuff. Not too much of their new movies are that funny, or I don't know Nick how Schwartz, they even or Nick Schwartzen, whichever one it is. Yeah, he's pretty good. Oh, was was is he in their movies? He's he in their is. later movies, like Grandma's Boy. Yeah, and, uh, okay. Just go with it. But any movie that Adam Sandler's in, he just I got will lazy. watch it, dude. No, I'll sit there and watch it and hate and that, it the whole hold time. A second, but that's still part of the reason why he's gotten lazy. People still watch. Dude, him. I'll sit there and watch it and hate it. I'll just yeah. hate, I'll watch it to hate on it. Like I, I was watching a movie one time and my sister walks in and she's like, "Don't you hate Adam Sandler?" I was like, "Yeah," but I just to watch the movie. <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes I have done that. I have uh, justified my reason or my feelings of hate by surrounding myself with more material to hate those things, um, whether that is a, a TV show. Um, oh, I've done that with uh, Gabriel Iglesias. Is that a comedy routine? Oh, he's pretty terrible. He's, he's fucking terrible. I know a lot. He has a lot of fans. Um, I think it's really cheap to just use stupid voices as, as a routine. Also, I don't like comedians who purely play on their race oh well well not all of it's his race i mean a large part of his act a is lot him of being is him. overweight uh, well, and that yeah, doesn't yeah. really have to do with race that's, that's just him you know being overweight making fat jokes about himself um but uh again it's it's really his just annoying totally unreal voices that he does um he usually I hate the reverts to high, high-pitched voices I, I it's just like if you're telling a story about how someone was and how ridiculous a situation is i understand that you have to throw a little bit of flavor I, mean, I always there, have the same voice for everybody that i do you have the same you have like two voices yeah yeah you have like two voices for um for people that you're in 
impersonating. Um, yeah, I'm but not, I'm not I'm a not, professional comedian. I'm not a fan yeah. of your comedy. <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> I'm not you know, I, I, you're uh, my biggest you're... critic, and I appreciate it. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> Sometimes I fucking hate you, dude. I know you do, um, but I appreciate that you still stick around with me. You hate me, but you somewhat uh, love me. Well, yeah. I got so, something interesting. Hey, by the way, yeah. this was not your mic stand. No, I you just gave it saw. to me. Did I give this to yeah. you? I don't know. You broke one of them. That's broken. This is the broken yeah, one? Yeah, you broke, I broke that mic stand and you gave it to me. Oh, okay. So, you, it was never yours either. Michael used well, to have me in a sh- shitty power pop band. Oh, man. Uh, Red Hook Shooters it was... Pretty good. Yeah, that's what you say, man. Songs. That's what you say. Hey, man. That. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I was never there. That, that little man on vocals was okay. He wasn't bad. Yeah. And it was you still have like, his amp? Yeah, I do. Let me have that, dude. No. Wow. <laughs> just because. Wow. I like it being there. Um, I got something interesting in the mail today. I ordered it a few days ago. I got a uh, Polaroid film. Polaroid. From the Impossible Project. It's a. Uh, you remember Polaroid cameras, the uh, instant cameras? Me- media cannot be outdated. I, I mean, this is what I like about it. I do a little bit of photography here and there. I dabble. I just bought a drone to do some videography. But um, what I like about the Impossible Project, this is the brand that makes this Polaroid film. I like that it actually prints out. Like, because I don't ever print my pictures from my camera. Like, I'll take a bunch of digital pictures, store my on my computer... And I'll look back at them years later. I was just looking at pictures earlier from earlier today. Like I was looking at pictures. And it was cool to look at them. But you don't have a physical picture to look at. You don't have anything to like touch or put up or display. No, no I totally get it, man. I, I, I've thought about that before. If like how many people's babies' pictures have been lost to uh, phones that... Just have been disabled or, or not on the cloud? Just Yeah, not on the cloud. They just lost the phone. They sold their phone back without thinking about it um, or, you know, uh, fell into the fucking water. I don't know what happened to Yeah, the whatever phone. happens but, to your phone, but people you lose your take pictures. take 100 pictures a day. Some people literally take 100 pictures in a day and they'd never print them out. And uh, yeah. So without so so how how does this work again? Um, so you, it's just the little packs of uh-huh. uh, ten or twenty exposures. I'm not sure how many. It's not a lot. That pack that pack of film right there is like twenty five bucks. Hey. It's well, expensive. It's more than a dollar yeah. a picture. But you put it in a Polaroid camera, which somehow the chemical process takes place where after you take the picture, it prints it out, and within twenty minutes you have a fully developed picture. That you can give to somebody. It's like the art of making CDs. Like you give it away or you like trade them or you leave it at their house and put it on their wall. I just think it's an art that's lost. Printing pictures is just an art that's lost. And it sucks that it's so expensive, but it's something that I hope never goes away. Or like vinyl records, I hope it comes back one day. I hope people start printing out all their pictures and having photo albums and stuff. Do you think that the art of uh, creating a playlist to give to somebody else is lost? Dude, too? I think that's beautiful. I think that those are beautiful, and I think that that's lost on people. Like, High Fidelity, man. That's one of my favorite <laughs> movies. You know that's one of my favorite movies. High Fidelity, John Cusack. If you've never seen it, John Cusack goes and uh, relives all of his breakups. Uh, he creates a top ten list. A top of ten breakups. list of his breakups. Goes back, relives them all. And he's just this guy who owns a record store who stores all of his records chronologically. So if he wants to rem- if he wants to listen to a certain album, he has to remember what he was doing the day <laughs> that he bought that album and the way that it made him feel and then go into his wall of records and find it. And when I saw that, I was like, holy shit. I'm not John Cusack, but I want to be <laughs> I want to be one day. I, 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 I think I, that was more of the Jack Black in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will agree to that. Um, I, I would say again, I'm not John Cusack either. But if anything, I, think, I was more like the uh, the weird bald man yeah, in the shop. He was super high fidelity. Quiet. <laughs> uh, not necessarily as knowledgeable as John Cusack was, because they were always testing each other. Yeah. But he had an appreciation for the art of oh, it. Oh yeah, and, he, uh, he was envious of John Cusack. He was like. Really? That's how you chronal. That's how you store your records. <laughs> uh, I mean, mine are just in a crate over in the corner over there. I have no. There's a little bit of a. Well, at least they're standing upright. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't flatten them. 
Do also, you? something that I had only learned from that movie. What? Well, that? That, that, that you she, don't stack them? Yeah, I didn't know that. It never made... I mean, I, I My never dad thought told about me that. that. Do you have records? Do you collect records? Do I have records? The only records that I actually have, other than a couple that you have given me and other people have For given Christmas? me... For um, Christmas? Yeah. Um, uh, actual records, I wouldn't say they're mine. I have uh, a large collection of my dad's records, um, which well, be are yours just one day. unplayed. Um, yeah. Wow. They're, I mean, originals, non played? No. Well, some, I think there are some like that too, but I'm saying like they're just sitting in the garage, which is probably oh, bad. Oh, dude, get them yeah. out of there. Yeah, it's Pete's not their heat. friend. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's where they are. Uh, yeah. So you don't, There's a lot of, a lot you don't of, collect them? No. I do not collect. I, I, think, I used to uh, think that records were pretty lame to collect. I was like, who wants dead media? Who wants dead format? You gotta have a, a record player, and I still think that to a, a certain extent. Like, I don't like the kids who just go out and buy records and play them on their Crosley all-in-one record players. But I mean, I've invested a lot of money in having a pretty good um, sound system that I enjoy playing them on, and um, it's pretty fun to collect records because they're limited pressing. Sometimes they're colored. Which I mean, it's lame, but I mean, if you're no, gonna, that's no, a they way look really good. Um, but that's a good way to market too. Uh, like, sometimes I have wanted to buy certain records based on that. Dude, um, the colors are amazing that they have. I mean, that's not a I new stop, thing. I They've been myself from doing it. But yeah, the yeah. splatters, the yeah, the different splatters, translucence. Ones, um, those are crazy good. I think the only one that I have like that is uh, a Comadre um, split with glasses. That, oh yeah, I have yeah. that one. Uh, what was it? It was like a white and black splatter. I think they were all different. Oh, couple, were they different? Those two different ones. Yeah, I think mine was white with a black splatter that, on yeah. it, and uh, yeah, I think that's the only colored vinyl I actually have. But um, and I yeah, I think that's the only only vinyl that I've ever bought that where I was like straight out buying it and not um, uh, not for a purpose of like uh, when I saw Dangers, I wanted to buy the vinyl so they could have the band sign it. Same thing with Trash Talk and um, uh, what other band? Oh, Comadre. Well, ceremony. I, you have a ceremony record? No, you know what? I, I should have. Oh, you have, you have them. Comadre's last record they ever I have pressed. their last record. Um, and you had them I missed, sign it. I, well, here's the thing. I missed their show. I didn't know it was going on. All right, when I found out that it was going on, I was on the other side of Fresno. And I was like, God damn it, it's fucking 930. I don't think, you know, if I make it there right now, I don't think I'll see them. And um, so I emailed them and I... I had already purchased the record and there was a thing for special notes. And so I asked them, uh, I explained the whole situation that I was collecting um, very specific bands that I really liked and that I was trying to get them to sign it. Well, you got to explain me, that you do that. I was going to bring that up right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was a certain couple of bands that I really wanted. Um, they were one on the list and uh, I had emailed them and I asked them, if um, they would, they they all live in different parts of the Bay Area, and they explained to me through there that you know they didn't know if they could get me um, my package in the week or two span that it was supposed to be delivered. Um, that uh, you know that they all lived in different parts of the Bay, that they didn't always see each other. Um, they weren't sure if they could do it or um, how long that would take. About a month and a half later, I get the package, and honestly, I don't know if they were being nice guys and just. Maybe one guy two of them <laughs> signed it, and the others forged the the other parts. Um, but uh, there were a total of five people in the band. Uh, they they did give me a record with five signatures, and I I appreciate the effort, even if it wasn't to them. I don't know if it ever was. I wasn't there in person, but I I just think that's still a cool thing for them to have done. Um, so yeah, uh, there's still a couple bands on my list. A lot of them don't play anymore, or don't. Uh, uh, play that often um, so I have to start uh, looking at that and also I've even tried to buy some of those bands uh, CDs because I used to have that music downloaded at a time and um, a lot of the CDs you can't find anymore those uh, uh, I think you can download pay for them to download them off of like Amazon um, but a lot of the CDs I'm looking for um, they're they were on small labels and those labels uh, no longer print those CDs so whatever is out there is just out there. So a lot of the time I'm uh, on Amoeba Records or uh, Rasputin Records just every now and then taking a little search, seeing if they're on the list, and uh, 
every now and then I get lucky. Somebody's turned it back in, and uh, that's how I buy my CDs. But yeah, I mean th- those are both dead format CDs. You're the only person I know who listens to CDs, man. Hey man, I gotta listen to all the tracks. <laughs> you yeah. don't even. Have I think a, I talked about this on the last podcast yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have an MP3 player, and we were just talking about that earlier that you've never owned an iPod. Uh, yeah, I did have some cheap MP3 player. I forget what brand it was. It wasn't even a Zune. Um, it held. It, I had quite a bit of music on it, um, and then I left it in the car in the heat, Oof. and it stopped turning on. And uh, yeah, so. Again, that's uh, and by that time, my computer, like that I had, wasn't in use anymore, non-existent, or crashed, you know, due to some circumstances, <laughs> of some kind, you a know. Porno. Uh, I, I never said that, man. You know, people just look up things and then Blue things screen. just happen, you know. <laughs> um, well, anyways, uh, that uh, yeah, that's how I lost a lot of music. Is that I. I that's why I I uh, like that's why you're CDs. so against it. That's why I like CDs. Again. I like to ha- know that I have them. I understand putting them onto a digital format as a convenience, but if you don't have that physical copy, and I know that I guess with iTunes you always own it, right? Yeah, it's it's always stored yeah, on there. It's yours, yeah. That still seems like an inconvenience to me. I, I guess it's not more of an inconvenience than re re adding. Um, well, you don't even CDs. have to purchase anything anymore, man. You just have Spotify and you just listen to it whenever you want. Ah, that's still a purchase without realizing it's a purchase. Yeah. Streaming services are still purchases without owning it. If that company goes out, you that's true. again do not own any of that. And uh, you know they could be investing millions in another uh, another venture that has nothing to do with their original format. Um, and go out in 10 years and then you paid all that money for streaming services and you don't own anything anymore. Sure. You did enjoy it during that period of time. How do you feel about title? Uh, you know, I, you think it's ever going to take off? I don't. It just seems like it's just, why do they keep trying? Uh, because I think that they're okay. Jay Z is a smart ass. Yeah, he is. he is. He's built a fucking empire. Oh yeah. Um, uh, I don't think he has business people that are completely wrong in thinking that it's a good idea. Um, I just think that with the accessibility from other formats right now, there's just no way for them to get off the ground. I don't know if they're trying to wait out people like Spotify or other groups to, to just crash and burn and then them be the only source. I don't know what their thing is. I don't, I don't know what their, what their little millionaire henchmen are, are like plotting or waiting out um i i imagine that that a man that's built an empire from that um ha- has to have some kind of smart person that is saying just keep it in keep 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 your investment in right he now might just be stubborn man he might be <laughs> he just might be stubborn you know him and kanye are both just stubborn about title thinking or, it's just gonna happen no nah, they they had uh kanye walked away from title. Did he? yeah no they have a dispute oh, they, wow. they don't like I don't each even other remember that yeah i think kanye says that he owes him like it was something i'm these are completely different numbers i want to say it was either three million dollars or like 30 million probably 30 million man i don't it, think you cry about it three was, it was tears it was in a bucket at that point a certain amount of money that that he believes that title and um jay-z owe him and uh he's like yeah they're they're not really associated with each other right now and um there's litigation on that so um i hope one day all these streaming services crash and you're the only man who has, <laughs> has an archive you have an archive of slap. music and everybody's like we need fucking michael steinhauer he's our only hope <laughs> You He's know the what? archiver of music. You know what it is? I you know, I, I think a very a very It'll be the archiver for the ska <laughs> community. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's like Fahrenheit four fifty one. They've burned all the books and you know, the only way for those books to live on was for each one person to memorize a book <laughs> and to tell that story to the masses. And, you know, Stories like that scare the shit out of me, dude. You know, science fiction has scared the shit out of me, Chewy. Uh, a I very it's, early. It's sometimes it scared you into hysterics where you think oh, that yeah. the government's after you. Well, you know, they are, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I do a podcast, uh, giving them so much of my thoughts that I, I keep mean, to sometimes myself, I'll call you know? this guy and he'll just be like, I don't even know what you say. What are the things you say? You scare me sometimes. Well, I usually start off with the fucking nerve of you to call me. <laughs> 
<laughs> God fucking damn it. Usually I'm just tired. <laughs> you know, I just don't want to wake up. I mean, I used to just boil pots of spaghetti <laughs> to not go get pizza. You know, I, it, it's just too much to get dressed and go and Maximum live, chill live, just in your live, underwear. Live, live as a real person. Um, it's overrated. But uh, yeah, you know, um, another thing, another scenario from science fiction is uh, the Twilight Zone. Uh, there's the episode where this guy, you know, he's like got glasses and it's, everybody's controlling him. His, his, uh, he just wants to read, man. He just wants to read his books. His, uh, fucking boss is on him for reading. His wife is on him for reading. He just wants to be alone and he just wants to read to himself to enjoy. And then he goes into the bank vault where he works to get some alone time. And when he wakes up or when he goes out of the vault, Everything has been destroyed. Nuclear war has happened. And this is more real right now than it's any never other been time. More real. And so this Plus guy you walk into the just freezer walks work. around and then he like finds the remnants of a supermarket, gets some food, he gets that's all he goes to the library, tainted. he finds all well yeah, you know, the Twilight Zone didn't always make sense, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, nuclear fallout would have uh, polluted most of the food. Um, the, the remaining radiation would have uh, killed him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would have grown some tumors and died. Um, well, anyways, th- we didn't get that far into the the episode. I mean, the 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 episode only lasts a, in a day or two span, so he doesn't really realize all those implications. He's just walking to the library. He finds all these books still intact. And he just has all this time to read, and he's and you know that that was almost like I a think fantasy that episode fucked me, up dude. your life, man. Oh, dude, it was a fantasy. Just like being on my own, just do whatever the fuck you I want. You romanticized nuclear war. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> well, you know, I I just like well, if I didn't have all those CDs <laughs> in this scenario, like if. North Korea nukes this whole area. There's no way for me to even like make it to the next habitable place. I, or people are just too afraid of the nuclear fallout where they're not even coming. I'm alone. The only thing that I have, because all the fucking, t- you know, the lines are down, I can't stream anything now. I could, if I had a Spotify account, I wouldn't be able to uh, to look down. at it. Uh, my The cell phone towers would be down. Everything would be down. Off you the grid. To- would I would only have belly, my Harry physical. <laughs> I would only have my physical CDs and you know, all your Danny Elfman soundtracks. <laughs> <laughs> I was always more of a Mark Mother's Ball person than a Danny Elfman. I mean, God bless those Tim Burton soundtracks, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, Mark Mark Mother Mark Mark Mother's Ball. What has he done? Uh, he was Lord um, of the Rings. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he okay. So Danny Elfman was in Oingo Boingo, uh-huh. and later did all those Tim Burton movies. Uh-huh. Mark Mothersbaugh uh, was in Devo, and he later oh. did all of the the uh, the fucking uh, Wes Anderson movies oh, and shit soundtracks. Yeah, I hate those soundtracks. Oh man, because they're all xylophones. Yeah, they're a parody of themselves. You know, well, so was Oingo Boingo. I mean. Again, every Tim Burton soundtrack sounds the same, just like every Wes Anderson soundtrack sounds the same. Only exception is that Mark Mothersbaugh will bring in other music into the soundtracks, and he selects them himself. Always, usually, a lot of um, uh, needle in the hay. <laughs> Actually, that's where I got introduced to Elliot Smith. Um, yeah, uh, did they tear down the Elliot of, Smith wall? Um, Beatles? They just, what? Ha- they just teared down the Elliot Smith wall, right? Did they? I think they painted over it. Painted over it finally. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I saw it then last year before, before it was done. Yeah, um, you were there when I when I saw it. Uh, yeah, uh, shout out to him. Shout out to Elliot. Shout out to Elliot Smith and your sad ass music. A, a, a fond farewell to a friend. <laughs> that, that's a, that's a title. Yeah, I know. Is it? Do you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Cool. I don't listen to suicidal music all the time, but when I do, it's him. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, I hope that'll get preserved in your archive of music. I'll, I'll see him at the King's Cross. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Anyways, um, I think uh, we're we're good on time now. We are. I think we've uh, we've good. talked about everything we want to talk about today. As summary, a little summary of everything that's happened today. The world is uh, in a weird place right now. Uh, we're trying to live in the past by li- right by l- using dead media. Oh yeah. I'll Our beer of the day use. was uh, Fallhorn and by Anderson's Valley. And until next time.
as always, goodbye.